Hey, what's up? My name is Taclus, and today we're going to be looking at a better death, respawn, and live system. We're going to be looking at how to uh, die and respawn in the same location on the battlefield so you don't get mauled by your enemy. I'm also going to be looking at how to die and respawn in a certain location. And then I'm also going to look at how to have a limited number of lives. And when your lives are gone, that's it. Game over, and you're done. So let's get started. First things first, we're going to need to make a... Well, the reason they're going to be doing the tutorial the way I am, I'm going to be using a Boolean variable to help me with my death, is because when you're on the battlefield and you die, and the game is such that it wants to revive you in place rather than teleport you to a safe location, when you revive, you are immediately vulnerable again to enemy attacks. And the enemies will attack you, between the time you revive and by the time you've stood up and are ready to fight again. So, in that time frame, you need to be invincible. It's about two seconds that you need to stand back up. So, we're going to be using Boolean variable instead of the just when is dead bit of code. Which, we'll, we'll still use that. But, anyways, just follow along. This will be a better way to die and respawn. So, first, when is dead, do Boolean variable death equals true. So now we can make all of our code inside the death variable. When it's true, now this is what happens when you die. So first I'm gonna add a couple of visual tweaks so people who die immediately know they're dead. Other than the whole falling down and dying bit but I'm also going to add a letter box. Next, I'm going to make a counter. No, no, no. I'm going to add the invincibility. So combat, not dead objects. Health and defenses and vulnerability equals true. Now, when I do this line, it will permanently set the rest of the game so my character is invulnerable, which... It makes sense why it does that, but that's not what we want it to do. So we'll follow this line of code up in a little bit with a bit of code so that it is, um, the invulnerability goes away after a short period of time. So then we're going to do a countdown timer. Two. Do the wonderful thing of revive. That is definitely important. Then we're going to do a countdown timer of four and this is going to end our death sequence equals false there we go that's the basics of it um and when you die let's say that you want to die and you respawn in place if you were me you want to penalize the player a little bit because they screwed up they died so you can grab the coin counter variable, which this is a variable that is part of the coins. If you've opened up a coin's brain, this variable will appear. So if this hasn't appeared, drop a coin in your world, open up its brain, or just type coin space counter. And no, not equals. We want it to be decremented by five. Let's make it painful. Now, if you give out coins by the hundreds, you might want to make this higher, but whatever. Now, if I ran this code as is, it would decrement five coins over and over and over and over and over. So we need to add a started to. Next, we need to add, a, oh, look at that, more downloads. We also need to add one to decrement a lives variable, but I'm going to make this a global lives variable. That way you can have power-ups or collectibles or whatever that would increase how many lives you have. So this will decrement your lives by one come on there we go decremented by one so this is the basics of the death and to make you not invulnerable anymore when it is false invulnerability also needs to be false now if you play with invulnerability much um you're gonna have to adjust this because this makes invulnerability constant 
always in the game unless you're dead. If you have a power-up that plays with invul invulnerability, then you may need to do a counter down here, like at 3.9 seconds, invulnerability equals false, and then put this as a duration timer for a little bit shorter than that. You could do that, but um, this, is, this is the way I like to do it. So this is how you die and respawn and stay invulnerable. Let's give it a shot. Make sure everything works right. I've already dropped some more coins into my world, so I'll pick these bad boys up and have my handy dandy genetically modified super goblin to beat the crap out of me. So I'm down, I lose five coins, I'm revived, and he can't hurt me until now. Now he can hurt me. So back to five coins, dead again. Now I'm to zero coins. Now there's something important we'll need to go over because watch, if he kills me again, Come on, hit me. I now have minus five coins. That's that's a problem. So what we need to do is we need to add a line of code that um, makes sure that even if it makes the coin counter negative, that it defaults back to zero. So underneath that line of code, when the coin counter is less than zero, then the coin counter equals zero. There we go, simple as that, we fixed it. Now let's, have, now let's add a live system. So you can only die a certain number of times before you stay dead. So when global lives are less than or equal to, and even though it's unlikely that you'll ever get less than zero lives i always add this just for stability's sake you never know what kind of laggy glitchy bugs are going to appear in someone's world so this adds a little bit of stability so when lives are equal to or less than zero we're going to run a few lines of code now the first one is we have to make death false again because if death remains true then eventually they'll be revived and we can't have that next we are going to add some of the same visual effects that we did for when you're dead. So that it doesn't look like you're in a different mode, so to speak. It looks like you're just um, not reviving. So also want to put the letterbox on. Lastly, let's say not lastly, but after two seconds, oh, it's two seconds, we're going to Parents display fade. Transition time. Two seconds. So after two seconds, it will take two seconds to fade away. So that's a total of four seconds before the screen fades to black. So at five seconds, we're going to put up the text that every gamer wants to see. It's the text that, you know, it's just just makes your day whenever you see it game come on keyboard game over wow it's not cooperating at all today there we go game over and we're gonna put it in the center of the screen we're going to make it extra large and we're going to make it red now at this point, the game won't do anything for a while, except just stay on the screen. So we're gonna put a counter, oh, wow. Put a counter for 10 seconds. And let's go to seven. Do, where is it at? Um, game over, here we go. Couldn't remember where that tile was and game over will kick them out of the game completely now if i ran this it would immediately game over me and do you know why all numeric variables always default to zero unless we tell them otherwise so once global lives equal three 
So this means that once ever in the entire game, we have three lives. So, looks like everything should be working, right? If you're wondering how to make you respawn at a certain location, I'll get to that in just a moment. We're gonna hop back into our world. We're gonna scoop up these this loot on the ground. And gonna have the Hulk beat the heck out of us again. So we're dead. Minus one life, minus five coins. Come on. Minus five coins, but we're only at zero coins now. Now we've only got one life. This is it for us. I don't know. Can, can we do it? We're dead again. This time, fade to black. Game over. And that's it. So that's how you make a game over sequence. Hopefully that makes sense. And lastly, let's grab a logic cube. Here we go, logic cube. These are my buddies, I love logic cubes. Wherever you want your player to respawn. Let's put the logic cube right here. Now, if we want him to respawn at a certain location, which if you do it this way, um, you don't need nearly as much code as what I just said, but that's, that's up to you. Um, I still would recommend it doing it my way anyways, just in case enemies follow you back to spawn, you don't get stuck in an endless loop. But when you're dead, release revive. And sadly, there's no revive at position tile. So we're also going to do started, then position equals we go to objects in world picker the logic cube position there we go simple as that so hopefully this works now i'm going to lead my little goblin farther away so you can see the effect come on so i'm dead Poof, I move and then I revive. So that's the other way you can do it. Now, if you're running into issues where your character is being destroyed when it dies before you can revive it, have no fear. Go into character properties, go under combat, go under health and defenses, and make sure that destroy after death is turned off because you don't want your character getting destroyed when they die, do you? No, you just you want them to either stay dead or revive. And of course, last but not least, something that's always important is you should always display something as important as your lives. So we're gonna display the text, lives, and then a space. And then we're gonna do some more math plus lives. And this is something I like to put out of the way. So bottom center. Oh, I just realized that I made a mistake. I did not put the global tile, tile in front of the uh, lives tile so that wouldn't work. It's so this kind of thing that you have to kind of keep track of and not forget any of the little things about. So there we go. Global lives at the bottom. Now it works right. So when I get killed, fall down, I got two lives now. Teleport back and we're good to go. So I really hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, one last note, I've got to say, this is something I'm not happy with Project Spark that it's built this way, but that's just the way it is. Even with my tutorial, with any tutorial, if you are killed by a zombie, it will destroy you. Like here, let me, let me get killed by a zombie. It always destroys you, no matter what you do. That is because 
if we go and we look into the brain of one of our undead buddies, there's a line of code down here that when its target of attacking is dead, it will destroy the target and create a zombie at that position. Now, it's very cool when they do this to NPCs because they can kill like a villager and then, ah, zombie, nah. But this is very bad for when you're, uh, when it's the player. So if you're going to be adding zombies to your world, I recommend removing this line of code. Or at least removing that line of code. That one right there. So, a little bit frustrating that's how the zombie comes default. But I hope this all makes sense. Um, hope this tutorial was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you, be sure to leave a like below. And if you have something that you want to learn about in Project Spark or a tutorial, please drop a comment with your request and I will make a tutorial for you as to the best of my abilities. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys later.